What's up guys, today we are taking the Audi R8. I just started it for the first time in several weeks and uh, yeah, the cold start was fairly loud. Here's a clip of that. We are taking this car today, which actually doesn't look too dirty. Usually when you leave in the car park for too long, it gets pretty dusty. I need to get a car cover for this. But we are going to do a Q&A. Right then, Q&A in the R8. Now, I am going to stop in a little bit to read some of the questions that there are on my phone. But I've already seen, because I asked on Instagram and I had a little, little gander before I left just now. I have already seen that a lot of the questions are asking about Cole. Now, if you're new to the channel, you won't know who Cole is necessarily. Now, Cole is a good friend of mine who was helping me film and edit the videos for a while. So he was around for a year filming and editing the videos on this English channel, but then also the French channel. Now, recently he hasn't been in the videos. He hasn't been editing the videos and just hasn't really been that involved in the whole project of YouTube. So I thought the first thing I would do, because it was probably in the title and thumbnail, is to address that and then we can do all the other questions first. So, all I want to say about that is that it is very exciting, very good news, and isn't anything that's ended on bad terms. Cole and I are still really, really good friends and we should all be really happy and proud of him, guys, because Cole is getting married. So that is big news, massive news actually. And therefore, obviously, you know, you're getting married. There's a lot of things to think about. He is going to go off and work on his own projects and focus mainly on family life now. So, you know, starting his own family, getting married and carrying on with that. So we had a conversation about it and we decided it was best as far as YouTube was concerned to part ways to allow him to, to go there. You know, he was obviously great for the channel, really helped out a lot, so will be missed as far as uh, uh, what YouTube is concerned. I'm, you know, he's still in my life. We're still really good friends. So he may appear from time to time on my Instagram and on YouTube. But we should just all be so happy. I know a lot of you were potentially attached to him and really enjoyed having him on the channel. But we, you know, we need to be happy for him. It's like when a family member is getting married or, you know, having a kid or something like that. You're just so glad and happy and relieved because, you know, it's, it's a step I know he's been waiting to take for ages. He proposed. It's always a bit nerve-wracking. So, yes, you know, all we should all send him, you know, our congratulations um, for him and his fiancé uh, because they are going to be getting married in not too long even, actually. So that's hugely exciting. And I hope that clears things up as far as Cole is concerned. You guys may see him again. But, yeah, I mean, pretty big change. Honestly, fairly unexpected <laughs> because... It all happened fairly fast with him and his fiance, but that's when you know, you know, that sort of makes sense and he's, he's very happy where he is. So, anyways, that was quite a long chit chat about that. I'm now gonna find somewhere where I can pull over, get my phone out, and answer the rest of your questions. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up the questions now, and I'm literally just gonna answer some of them. And we're gonna improvise. I haven't seen most of these before. Besides from your grandfather, how did you discover your passion for cars? Um, so, yeah, my grandfather was very passionate about cars. Sadly, he's passed away now. And he kind of, you know, gave that passion to my mother. So, I always say that I got it through my grandfather, but re realistically, it was through, through the two of them. And especially because my sister used to have dance uh, classes just on the border in a place called Beausoleil in France, on the border of Monaco. And we used to have to sit down and wait for for hours in a little cafe next to there. And I often I would do my homework. And if I finished my homework in time, mum would test me kind of as a, as a memory jogging exercise on car brands and come, then it became models. So at first it was, you know, look at that logo and then tell me what that is. So a car would come by and I'd have to say, you know, Volkswagen, Toyota, Mercedes, BMW, etc. And then eventually managed to get that. And then it became, you know, let's concentrate on models. And I think that played a big part in it. I really enjoyed playing that. And mum has always been, you know, into cars. Obviously more so now. But uh, yeah, so she definitely played a massive part in that as well. 
best bang for the buck sports car entry level supercar. Now I still think, I'm obviously very biased, but I still think Lotus Elise's are a great bang for your buck because as a driving, ex it's not the fastest, but as a driving experience, it's so raw and just, oh, it's just so nice to drive. Feels like okay. a sports car, you know, you can take the roof off, you can make them very loud, two seats, looks really cool. I think Lotus Elise is a very good, very good chance. I mean, they're not cheap by any means, but they're a lot cheaper than other sports cars. I think secondhand, you know, you can you can start getting them for around 15,000, something like that. What did you study? Um, I studied, so I mean, I, I went to boarding school, I did the International Baccalaureate, and I, you know, I had English, economics and design technology as my higher level studies and then i went to university to study business but only stayed four months and then dropped out what has owning the scuderia been like so far it has been unbelievable and owning this car as well has been fantastic but it shows you the difference between i i do think it is two different slightly different caliber of car i mean just in terms of the cost but also there is something special about having a Ferrari. Ferrari themselves can be difficult to deal with at times. As a company, you know, they're very, uh, you know, if you don't have so-and-so car, you can't buy the new one, etc. that whole side. So I don't necessarily agree with the, with the company's morals as far as that's concerned, but you cannot deny that they make fantastic cars. And there's something about owning a piece of that brand almost, which is very special. When I got the R8, it was, hugely and still is hugely special but in a different way because it's a v10 it's kind of got that lamborghini aspect to it and it was my this was my first supercar granted it you know arrived not too long before the scuderia but it will always have that place in my heart as my first supercar and i love this car it's so much more comfortable so much more usable probably better as a car than the scud but the scud definitely has a lot of emotion i'm really bad at giving short answers what car will you take on Snow Tour Volume 3? I'm taking a BMW X4 M competition with Car Vlogger. I'll overlay some photos right now. It's all, uh, it's done as a police car. It's wrapped as a police car uh, with Car Vlogger's number on the side. So that's going to be really, really good fun. I look forward to that. That's going to be about a week uh, and I'll be making some content on that too, which will be great. What motivates you? I mean, that's a massive question for anyone. I think everyone has different motivations. I try and set myself goals. Goals really motivate me. And I try and really distinguish between different types of goals. So for example, I'll give myself what I call materialistic goals, which are owning a Ferrari by a certain age, let's say, or, you know, I want to own an Aventador one day or just things like that, an apartment or watch maybe, just materialistic goals. And then I'll give myself real goals, goals such as I want to be able to, you know, I've brought a certain company to a certain point. I want to have been able to spend more time with my parents, spend more time with my sister, goals like that. And those things motivate me. And as far as I see it, that also grows me as, a, as in work, because in order to spend more quality time with my parents, I need to organize myself better. And it, it, it really makes me grow in general, as far as all of that's concerned. So that motivates me. I think what also motivates me a lot is almost that side of uh, having grown up in the south of France, having grown up in Monaco, having been extremely lucky in the world that I grew up in. Again, it wasn't anything crazy. I don't think it was anywhere near what people think my childhood was in terms of growing up around there because we never lived actually in Monaco. We lived outside of Monaco. But it's proving to people who will always say, you know, you're from Monaco. You're always just going to be this the son of these people who made it in Monaco. So it's proving to people that I have my, my own businesses. You know, I do my own work. Uh, I live off my own back. You know, I don't have any uh, allowance, anything like that. Everything that I buy, rent is off my own work. So that motivates me quite a lot, I think, is the amount of hate received for that and um, unjustified hate because it's, you know, unresearched or, or, you know, people don't really know what it is. So it's proving to people I want to build, you know, enough credibility and enough credible businesses and projects to prove people wrong as far as that's concerned so that's something else that motivates me and that's being me completely open with you and i think like anyone you just want to um succeed and i think one last thing which is going to seem like an obvious one but i hate being bored i really 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 dislike not doing anything 
So I think I get motivated of the fear of getting bored. If that makes any sense. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I get, will give myself more work and more things to do because I'm like, well, when this thing's finished, what am I going to do then? I need something else to follow that up. So yeah, that's, that's another one of those. This is going to be a long video. Tips on how we can all afford an R8 and 430. I mean, a lot of what I said in the last question, but the main thing is, I think the 430 was the first time that I kind of realized, obviously I realized when I had the, like the Lotus and the Alpine, and then I got this, that it was kind of, it was, it was nuts effectively, you know, that I was able to drive around in, in these cars. But the 430 was like a big shock to the system where I realized I was like, wow, this is, this is insane. You know, I can't believe, I just cannot believe that this is happening. And it really proved to me and I know it's gonna sound cheesy, but it really proved to me that if you really believe in yourself and you're willing to put the work in, that you can achieve what you wanna achieve because I never thought that was gonna happen, to be completely honest with you. I did not think I was gonna be anywhere near able to buy a car like that. Now, I don't want that to sound just like, oh, look what I've managed to do, but that's just me being completely honest with you. So I think, honestly, if you're willing to put the work in and you believe, that would be the first tip. Second tip is, you know, it's not as expensive as people think, so it depends how you buy the car. So, like, I did not buy the 430 hour, and I'm financing it. So, you know, it, it, people see the price of the car, you know, 180,000 euros, let's say, for, for a Scuderia. Mm. They just see it as that's a lump sum. Like, how did you make that 180 grand? Realistically, you know, you put a down payment down 20, 25,000, something like that, and you pay your monthly payments. That's all you have to do, really, to be able to get the car. Now, the problem with that is a lot of people will get cars when they, you can't quite afford it yet because the running costs are very high. And, you know, if you can just scrape away the monthly payments, it's, it's a, a bad idea. So, obviously, wait until you can afford that comfortably. But, you know, it's not as far, it's definitely not as out of reach as I originally thought it was. You start looking into ways and you realize that it's actually more possible than you think. So that, when I found that out, motivated me more because, you know, if you're aiming for a goal which is so far away, you kind of lose motivation to get there because you're like, oh, it's such a long way away. Whereas when you realize, actually, it's not as far as you thought, you really start pushing till you get there. And that's what happened to me. Right, I think we'll end there, because that's that was long. This is a long video now. But um, I enjoy these Q&As. These are the questions you guys asked me. If they were questions you didn't find interesting, I apologize. We can find another way of doing it next time. Maybe we can, you know, vote on which questions I answer. But those are the questions you guys put. There's a lot of French ones as well. But I appreciate you sending in any questions. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, gave you a little bit of insight of what's going on at the moment. So... Anyways, I'll see you guys very soon. Next, next big project, I'm off to Brussels. I'm going to Amsterdam and then snow tour. So uh, yeah, really exciting stuff. And then we'll be back with this car soon. So the next video is going to be a video talking about the next big modification I'm doing to this car, which is very exciting. So I'll see you there. Thanks guys, cheers. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.